Back in the 1982 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Colts possessed the number four overall pick and used it to snag the first quarterback off the board, Ohio State's gunslinger, Art Schleister. Gil Brandt, the personnel director of the Dallas Cowboys at the time, said Schleister resembled guys like Terry Bradshaw and Roger Staubach. He was a guy who could come in and turn an organization around right away. Known as King Arthur, not only was Art Schleister an elite talent, Schleister throwing. It is caught by Anderson. He also seemed to be a great guy. He once visited a child in the hospital, the mother of whom claimed Art saved her child's life. He also, in a time of college partying and drugs being more popular than ever, never so much as had a bottle of beer or sampled any of the drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Everything he tried, he did well. And at the same time, he looked like a goddamn model, said Art's best friend Bill Hanners. If he sounds too good to be real, so be it. This last quote was from a biography about him published in 1981. This dude was literally still in college and had a biography written about him. That's how big of a deal he was. But after being drafted, it didn't take long for some serious problems to emerge. Before long, Schleister was out of the NFL and considered a massive bust. However, this was the least of his problems, as Schleister has faced legal troubles for the past four decades, and in the process, has lost millions of his own money and others' money gambling. Now before we continue, this video is sponsored by Raycon. When I'm editing these videos for you guys, I typically tune into podcasts like 3 and Out, hosted by John Middlecoff to catch up on any sports news while I work. Honestly, when I had cords getting all tied up in my chair, it was just really annoying. And having these wireless Raycons has been a game changer. It just makes my work so much more convenient. But what I really love about these everyday earbuds is how much quality audio they give at half the price of other premium audio brands. And I don't have to worry if they can handle a full day because of their eight hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life. Raycon earbuds are also awesome because they offer three customizable sound profiles. I prefer the Pure Audio sound profile for perfect clarity while listening to podcasts. Also, the noise isolation feature is really helpful to block outside noise so I can be totally immersed in what I'm doing. Whether you like to listen to music while going on a walk or get an audiobook in while doing chores, these everyday earbuds are perfect for you. If you want to help support my channel, click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash KTO to get 20% off your Raycon purchase plus free shipping. Shout out to Raycon for the sponsor. Now let's get back to the video. Back in high school, Art had become a local legend. When he took over as the team's starting quarterback, in 30 career games, they never lost a single time with Art at the helm. During the summer, to strengthen his arm, he would throw 2,500 passes a week. In one drill in particular, he lofted the ball 50 yards over an 18-foot net while seated on the ground. Also, during his high school days, Art and several friends would pool their resources and head over to Seattle Downs, a harness racetrack in Ohio. Even in high school, Art became a regular going once or twice a week. At the time, no one really noticed or if they did, didn't really think it was all that big of a deal. As a football player, Art had garnered so much attention that the legendary Ohio State coach Woody Hayes, who couldn't stand hotshot quarterbacks, you made this mistake 15 times this fall. Now you get it. wanted Art to lead his team. Hayes was a man of a different era. He lived and died by the run game. Three yards and a cloud of dust was the philosophy he lived by. When you throw a pass, he loved to say, only three things can happen, and two of them are bad. However, when recruiting Art, Coach Hayes surprisingly was willing to pivot to a heavier pass offense. Once enrolling at Ohio State, Art immediately won the starting quarterback job as a freshman, and Coach Woody Hayes gave him the reins right away, which was rare in those days, as NCAA freshmen weren't even allowed to play on the team until the rules changed a few years prior in 1972. His freshman year, 1978, Schleister beat out a singer incumbent who had been all Big Ten. We will see if Gerald will be in the lineup. He is not. The freshman Schleister is a quarterback. In his much anticipated debut, he threw five interceptions. Overall, it was a shockingly bad season for Schleister throwing the ball as he threw just four touchdowns to 20 interceptions. In the final game of the season, 
the Gator Bowl, Schleister threw an interception late in the fourth quarter that effectively ended the game. At the end of the play, Woody Hayes, already infamous for his sideline tirades, punched the Clemson linebacker in the throat. Shortly thereafter, Hayes was fired due to the incident and never coached again. For Art Schleister, he bounced back and went on to have a dominant sophomore season under a new coach. He was a Heisman candidate and his team reached the Rose Bowl. But after a brutal loss that cost them the national title, Art started spending more time at the racetrack. The amounts he was betting started small, but they continued to grow. The day before an Ohio State-Michigan game, he and two teammates won $1,500. Schleister later said that gambling was the only thing he found that could match the high of playing quarterback. His whole life, he was told what to do, what to say, how to act. Gambling, as he saw it, allowed him to escape all that. What's also crazy was he would often run into his college coach, Earl Bruce, at the track. Despite seeing his quarterback there often, this wasn't alarming to the coach at the time. But once rumors reached Coach Bruce's office about what was really going on, he grew concerned. There were rumors that Art was illegally betting with bookies, and another rumor that was particularly alarming, which was that Art allegedly owed an Ohio State booster 12 grand, but never paid it. When Coach confronted Art, he denied all this to his face. Of course, this was all happening behind closed doors. To the public, Art had been a hero on the field. Art became a four-year starter at Ohio State, something that just didn't happen in those days. He was a dual threat who had won them a lot of games. Some said he could have been the number one pick in the draft after his sophomore year. But at the very least, from the public's eye, he appeared to have a bright future in the NFL on the horizon. Excitement echoed throughout Baltimore when Schleister arrived. In fact, the team traded away their two veteran quarterbacks to allow Schleister the reins to his new team. But he showed up to camp physically out of shape and mentally distracted. Instead of starting day one, he lost the job right away to another rookie, fourth rounder Mike Pagel. I am not exaggerating, said Ernie Accorsi, then the Colts assistant general manager, when I tell you that Mike Pagel beat him out on the first day of practice. It was just no contest. For Art, this was a major blow to his confidence. On top of that, Art's girlfriend also broke up with him at the time. Losing a quarterback battle and being broken up with were completely foreign feelings to the former campus hero, and this reportedly sent him spiraling. To make matters worse, the NFL player's strike happened, and before long, Art was gambling, and gambling a lot. Gambling was the one thing I could say, screw it, I can do whatever I want. It was my outlet, my release. I got high when I placed a bet. Not when I won a bet, when I placed it. It started with him gambling $1,500 a week. That amount would escalate, and by mid-season of his rookie year, Art had blown his entire signing bonus of $350,000. This only continued to spiral. By the end of the strike, he had at least $700,000 in gambling debts. Finally, one of the bookies told Hanners, Art's best friend who helped him place bets, you tell Fred, which was Art's betting codename, he best have some money next week. He won't be throwing too many footballs with a broken arm. Schleister, scared out of his mind, went to the FBI. A sting operation was set up, and on April Fool's Day, 1983, his bookies, lured to Columbus by a promise of 80 grand, were arrested at the airport. Now, even though Art was safe from the bookies at the time, going to the FBI meant that the NFL found out and Art became the first NFL player in two decades to be suspended for an entire season for gambling. The first two years of Art Schleister's pro career were a train wreck. He appeared in mop-up duty for three games his rookie year, putting up horrendous numbers, and he was suspended his entire second season. Year three became the first real opportunity for fans and the front office to see what this dude was made of. Had he matured, learned from his mistakes, maybe he quit gambling altogether? Well, for the time being, Art slowly worked his way into the starting role, and he started the final five games of the regular season. It was brutal. They lost all five games, and Art finished the year with a woeful 44% completion percentage and a 46 QB rating. Both ranked dead last in the league amongst quarterbacks with at least 100 pass attempts. 
The following year, he started just one game and was cut within the week. Considering they got blown out and Art put up horrendous numbers, you'd think that he was cut due to poor performance, even though head coach Rod Dauhauer said publicly that he decided Schleister didn't have an NFL arm, Art himself knew why. Quote, I know what happened. The rumors caught up with me. I had done some gambling that spring. He told me if he ever heard a rumor, he'd cut me. Not only had Art been gambling playing golf, but he also had placed sports bets even when he was suspended by the NFL. This dude literally couldn't stop himself. As far as top five draft picks go, Art Schleister, Ryan Leaf, and Jamarcus Russell are the most infamous quarterback busts of all time. All three struggled from poor performance and issues off the field. Of the three, Art Schleister has had the biggest struggles both on and off the field. Here's a brief overview of the spiral of Art Schleister's life. Gambling with him started young, with weekly trips to the racetrack in high school. Then in college, the addiction took over, and desperation to win back what Art had lost would forever consume him. This led him to being hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and being suspended by the second season of his NFL career and would eventually see him out of the NFL, never winning a single game he started. In 1986, he was signed by the Bills and cut before the season. In 1987, Art was arrested for his involvement in a multi-million dollar sports betting operation and was given probation after pleading guilty to illegal gambling. What's crazy is the Cincinnati Bengals still offered him a roster spot to be their backup, but Commissioner Pete Rozelle vetoed the move. In 1988, Art filed for bankruptcy and played a few games in the Canadian Football League before being released. His name alone kept his spiraling football career afloat. That was until 1992. From 1990 to 1992, he was the star of the Arena Football League, winning MVP and the championship in 1990, but was forced to retire after the league found out Art was betting on arena games. In the process, he had convinced the arena team's GM to help pay some of his gambling debts. This would mark the end of Art Schleister's pro football career, but his legal problems? They were just barely in their infancy. It's pretty shocking when you see what this dude was up to on a yearly basis and just how big of a hole he dug himself. From 1995 to 2006, Art served the equivalent of 10 years in 44 different county jails and federal prisons for things like cashing bad checks, stealing checks from employers, and running a fraud scheme where he told people he would get them Ohio State tickets at a good price if they fronted him the money, which he used to gamble with. Even during those years in different jails and prisons, he couldn't stop gambling. He had smuggled a cell phone from his public defender into jail so he could place bets. After being released from prison in 2006, Art owed $500,000 in restitution and started a nonprofit to educate others of the perils of compulsive gambling. So maybe this guy had started to figure things out, right? Well, in 2011, Art ran his worst scheme of all. Remember earlier in the video when I mentioned that Art visited a child in the hospital back when he played at Ohio State and the mother of the child said that Art had saved her child's life? Fast forward from the early 80s to 2011, through church, Art had coincidentally run into this lady. After finding out she was the widow of the former CEO of Wendy's, Art asked to meet up with this lady and over the next few years, conned over $1 million out of her. This lady, after eventually giving up all the money, desperately joined in on the con and conned over $400,000 out of friends to give to Art Schleister. She later went to law enforcement to get Art busted, but still lost everything in the process. She eventually owed $400,000 in restitution, forcing her to auction off nearly all she owned and give up her home. Since then, Art has mostly spent time in prison, along with multiple arrests of cocaine possession, even as recently as February 2024, within a month of this video's publishing. Doctors have diagnosed Art with Parkinson's disease and dementia, the side effects of numerous concussions. Also, Art has stated in the past that he went to Gamblers Anonymous, but didn't think he had a problem.